we go to God in prayer. Just quiet our hearts, our minds, and focus on our Heavenly Father. O oh God, O oh Heavenly Father, we have come into your house, into your presence to worship and adore you. You, we worship, doing so because of your never-ending love for us, your children. We worship and adore you because of your steadfast love renewed each and every morning. We exalt you, O oh God, above all else as you send your son, your only son, to save us. Jesus, who sacrificed heaven for us. Jesus, who gave up dignity to redeem us and who destroyed death to assure us. We adore and praise you, O God, as despite our missteps and failings, you constantly keep your promise never to forsake us. You're oftentimes disobedient children. And we look to you at this time in our land as we celebrate being free from enslavement, being free from those who surrendered to you, surrendered to your will. And even as we celebrate today, this very special day, being politically free on this our Independence Day, we acknowledge that to be truly free, we, your people called by your name, are free indeed by knowing the truth of your word. So, our eternal Father, we thank you, we thank you that you continue to bless our land. We thank you, God Almighty, that you have guarded and guided us with your mighty hand. You, over these many years, 60 plus years of independence, you have kept us free from evil powers, even at this time, as there are attempts to invade our land with foreign culture and lifestyles that are not of you. We thank you, God, that evil powers like these will be kept from our shores. We thank you that over these years you have been our light through countless hours. You have been the great defender to our leaders. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory, all the praise. And pray, God Almighty, that we'll show true respect for all. And when duty calls, we'll be stirred to carry out our duties they are in this land, guided and strengthened by you. We pray, God Almighty, that indeed you will give us vision that whatever vision we have will be guided and led by you. Give us a vision so that we do not perish. Thank you, God, that you have sent us knowledge, Heavenly Father. Grant true wisdom from above. And Father God, on this special day, we again thank you that you have continuously shown your love for this country. We have been through perilous times. We have survived, not on our own doing, but because of your mercy and your grace. We have survived hurricanes. We have survived storms. We have survived earthquakes. We have survived pandemics. And all because of you. So, Father God, we thank you again in this Jamaica land that you love and Jamaica land we love. We offer you these prayers through your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Oh, Father, who art 
Amen, amen. We continue the celebration of our praise to God and celebration of our independence with our hymn of praise, the right hand of God. We invite the congregation to stand. The right hand of God is rightly in our land, writing with power and with love, for conflicts and our fears, our triumphs and our tears are recorded by the right hand of God. The right hand of God is pointing in our land, pointing
especially welcome you to our emancipation service. Today we celebrate our history and humble beginnings and the journey we have taken through time to become a nation and people of great strength and even greater influence. We're 61 and although we have done much, we are still becoming. We can do better and we must do better. I will now invite our Assistant Secretary, Sister Ashley Clark, to bring us the welcome and opportunities for worship. After which, Brother Kirk, Kevon Kirkland of August Fellowship will do the blessing of the tithes and offering. After the tithes and offerings have been taken up, we will have a presentation from Vacation Bible Study which will be done by Sister Carmen Campbell. Sister Ashley. Good morning, Boulevard. Good morning. On behalf of our membership, leadership, and our pastor, Reverend Dr. Devon Dick, it brings me great joy to welcome you on this first Sunday in August. Happy Independence Day. <laughs> How are we feeling? Good? Who had their Akian saltfish for breakfast today? No one? Oh, good, good. good. <laughs> As we celebrate our 61st year, we give God thanks for making us a resilient, vibrant people. And we continue to pray for his blessing as we create a new tomorrow. Welcome to our members and our regular visitors in the chapel today. And welcome to our congregation joining us via live stream on YouTube and on CARE 93.5 FM. We're so glad to have you all celebrating with us. And we hope today's worship service will leave you feeling blessed and refreshed. Extra special welcome to our preacher for today, Reverend Dr. The Honorable Virgil Taylor. Retired pastor of the Bethel Baptist Church. Welcome, Reverend Taylor. We're happy to have you and absolutely excited to hear what the Lord has laid on your heart. Do we have anyone worshiping with us for the very first time today? Any first time visitors? Please stand so we may give you our warmest boulevard welcome. First time visitors. All right. All right, please pray for Sister Gloria McPherson of December Fellowship, who is hospitalized at the Heart Institute, Sister Herman Brown of September Fellowship, who is ill at home, Brother Fitzroy White of November Fellowship, who is hospitalized at the Kingston Public Hospital on Ward 2A, Brother Ralph Gentles of January Fellowship, who is recuperating at home, and for peace in Haiti, Sudan, and between Ukraine and Russia. Please also keep Sister Claudette Winter of September Fellowship, Sister Suzette Wiles of May Fellowship, and their families in your prayers. The funeral service for Sister Claudette Winter's brother will be on August 8th at 10 a.m. at the Portmore Gospel Assembly, and the funeral service for the mother of Sister Suzette Wiles will be on August 9th at 1 p.m. at Waterbrook Ministry. We also express our deepest condolences to Sister Marvin McLean of May Fellowship, whose brother passed away on July 30. On a lighter note, join me in wishing all members of August Fellowship a happy, happy birthday. All members, visitors, friends, if you're celebrating your birthday this month, please stand so we may sing you a happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, 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 happy bir
birthday to all of you. Please be seated. Celebrating today are Nova Barnett, Tanil Mullings, Lennox Gordon, and Winley Hemans. I hope you enjoy your extra special day. May God grant you your heart's desires and fulfill all your plans. Celebrating tomorrow on the 8th are Gloria Anderson and Mario Hyman. On the 9th, Raquel Me Thompson, Alfonso Broderick, and Claudine James. On the 10th, we have Donna Simpson, and on the 11th, Lynn Williams, Anne Marie Elwood, and Doreen Moat. Happy birthday to each of you when your special day arrives. Remember to commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. Please note there will be no empowerment ministry this evening, but on Wednesday, Deacon Debbie Morel Parker will lead our Bible study on Zoom and on YouTube at 6.30 p.m. The topic will be the power of commitment. We hope you'll join us. It's finally here. Vacation Bible School starts this Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We hope to see everyone from ages 4 to 18. There will be much to do and there will be lunch. So just come with an open heart, ready to participate. We're very excited to see you this Tuesday. Please see your bulletin for the balance of the notices. And at last, I leave you with a word from Galatians 5, verses 13 and 14. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do have a very blessed week. Thank you, Sister Ashley. Please stand for the blessing of the tithes and offerings. Second Corinthians 8 verse 12 states, If the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Please ensure that you are willing to give so your gift may be acceptable. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to come into your house. We thank you for the opportunity to help further your ministry. Lord, I ask that all these gifts be acceptable to you and also be used as you would have them fit. Lord, we ask that you help our church leaders to allocate the funds appropriately in the manner that you would have them to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
While we await Sister Carmen with the presentation, I just want to acknowledge Mrs. Taylor, the wife of our preacher for today. Mrs. Taylor? Oh, she's there waving. And I, I must tell you, she, I was telling the Reverend that she taught me at Merle Grove. I hope she doesn't remember. <laughs> Good morning, brothers and sisters. This morning, I am here to remind us all of our upcoming Vacation Bible Schools, which starts on Tuesday. Now, I'm very excited about this because it's the first VBS we are going to be having since the pandemic. We are, oh yes, it does deserve a clap. This week, before I do that, let me just remind us all what vac Vacation Bible School really is. It's a time in the summer when we bring all our students together to go on biblical explorations. And this year, it will be no less. We are going to be using the LifeWay 2019 production, which is entitled amazing adventures amazing adventures with jesus this production will be enlivened with music which is the words and choreography and music all were written by jeremy johnson and paul marino and the the lesson itself is a production of the lifeway ministry now it encompasses different encounters that Jesus had while he was on earth. He traveled about, he met with people, and each one was like a snapshot, a snapshot of the meeting of people with Jesus. But when we put all these snapshots together, it leads us to the amazing truth that Jesus is the Son of God and that when we believe on him, we will have life. And so that's what we're going to be doing this week. So I invite you to send out your students. We, registration will start by 8 tomorrow morning. Not tomorrow, I'm sorry, on Tuesday morning. And we will go through the week. We'll have a mid-morning snack and we'll have a break for lunch. And we'll go on to 2. At 2 o'clock, we ask you to pick up your students. When you come on Tuesday morning, there'll be somebody here for you to register your student with. So, please, come with the students. If you have neighbors who have children, invite them to come and have an amazing encounter that we are going to be doing this week. The, it's a world of adventure. It's waiting for us. The stories of Jesus in plain black and white will leap from the pages in colors so bright. Amazing adventure will lead us to see that Jesus Christ is truly the Messiah, the Son of God, and that when we believe on him, we will have life eternal. So please, come, send the children, and let us have an amazing encounter this week. God bless you all. We praise the Lord, church. We praise him another time. VBS is back and we are grateful to God that indeed such a wonderful ministry we can experience. We thank Sister Carmen for the reminder and indeed the presentation. As we normally do, we invite at this time as we continue in worship persons born in the month of August whether you're a member or not, 
we invite you to join us at the altar as we pray God's continued blessing on your life, August Fellowship. And as you come, we'll sing prayerfully, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on them. Almighty God and Father of all families, we commit here, O oh God, your children born in the month of August into your hands, Lord. For these, your children, O oh Father, let there be new beginnings, new beginnings of joy new beginning of success of progress and of a closer walk with you God new beginnings of testimonies give to them in Jesus name we thank you God for these August celebrant being strong in you O oh Father in the power of your might you are almighty God and we thank your God for being their rock for being their fortress in their good days in their bad days and on their special day Lord we thank your God for their deliverance for through your son Jesus Christ you have given them the opportunity of abundant life and so God we, we thank you for giving these men women children a mind to to trust in you God for without you oh God remind them that they are nothing and so father we, we stand in the gap for them we lift them up oh god in a special way for those celebrants who are experiencing situation of healing issues issues with their health oh god you are the great healer and we pray oh god for a special touch in this moment in this space god Oh God, a disease possible of cancer. You know them, Lord. And we present them before you, oh God, in a special way. Oh Lord, we thank you that even as they go through their distresses at times, that you have given them hope. 
Oh Lord, we thank you that we can always call upon you. We thank your God for your blessing on them individually and by extension, oh God, their families. And so God, you are worthy. You are our deliverer and we exalt you now, oh God. And thank you, God, for your goodness in their lives. For we pray these and other mercies. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Deacon Freito. And we have so many reasons to praise God this morning. We have been set free from the shackle of slavery and from all our sins. Let us stand and sing the praise choruses. He set me free all the way to Calvary, and I will serve thee. Let us stand. It's a morning of rejoicing, independence, emancipation, and don't forget August Fellowship. <laughs>
Let's give the Lord a hand. He has truly given life to us. We will now have our scripture readings. The responsive reading, Psalms 27, will be led by Deacon Marcel Boyce. This will be followed by Sister Nova Barnett of August Fellowship with the Old Testament reading, Daniel 3, verses 1 to 18. Please stand for the responsive reading. Our reading from Psalm 27 will be done alternately. I begin with the first verse and we will read together the 14th and last verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear?
when evil men advance when evil men advance against me to the war my flesh I'm sorry verse 3 though an army besiege me my heart will not fear though war break out against me even then will I be confident For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. A reading of God's holy word. Daniel 3, 1 to 18. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide, and set it on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations and peoples of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the cither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship him immediately will be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. 
They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and worship the image of gold I have set up? No. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. This is the word of the Lord. Let us continue to praise God and give him glory as the choir encourages us to lift every voice and sing. After which, we will hear from the Honorable Reverend Dr. Birchell Taylor, a devoted servant of God, a pillar of the Christian community and the Baptist Church in Jamaica.
I simply want to say that it is always a privilege and an honor to have the opportunity to come and share with the community of faith at Boulevard Baptist Church. Thank you for the welcome extended to me and to my wife. And I pray that God's blessings will always be upon you and that such blessings will be resting on the Reverend Devon Dick and Mrs. Dick wherever they are at this moment may God be with them let us pray Lord God you are the God of goodness and you are the God of grace and you have drawn us here together as well as you have set apart those who are elsewhere but at the same time are also here. Lord God, we depend upon you that you will speak to us and we ask of you that in the power of your spirit you will enable us to make the appropriate response to the proclamation of your word. Hear our prayer, O God, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to turn in your Bibles or to consult your gadget that has the scriptures. And we are going to look at a portion of the scriptures that were read to us from the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3 and verses 16 to 18. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the burning furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not even if he, but even if he does not, but even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that 
we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. I want to speak to you for a moment on the subject keeping faith with the faith. Keeping faith with the faith. The portion of scripture from which the words I read to you are taken represents a story, a story that I do not know if it is as well known today as it was so well known once upon a time. I do not know if even amongst the people of God this story is as well known as it was once so well known. But one of the things I do know is that whether it is as well known today as it once was, it is abundantly clear that this story retains its profound importance and its profound significance for us as a people of faith, a people of God as it ever had its significance and importance remain. And even in some respects, they remain with even more urgency placed upon us. Why do I say this? I say this because this story and the words I read to you from it reflect living the faith, working the faith, keeping the faith in a world that is unfriendly to the faith. A world that is hostile to the faith. And a world that is inhospitable to the faith. The three young believers live in a world, they kept their faith in the true and living God, the God of Israel. And as they did that, they faced a tremendous test. Bear in mind this, my friends. The God in whom they believed, the God whom they trusted, and the God with whom they kept faith is our God. The God revealed to us in Jesus Christ. And the God in whom 
we believe and the God who has become our God by grace through faith. And we believing in this God today are faced with the same test that those three young believers faced. One of the things we bear in mind though, we live in a world in the part of the world today where there is no direct no strident no aggressive opposition to the faith of God to faith in God no direct no strident no aggressive opposition to our faith. In fact, and this is the dangerous thing, in fact, we live in a world and in a part of the world where there is still formal, there is still official, and there is still general recognition of the presence of God. But one of the things is that the danger lies in this. The fact is, while there is still respect formally and officially and generally for the faith, Diminishing, of course, we are not without challenges as we are committed to the faith. Guess what? We live in a world, we now live in a world that orders its life even though it recognizes a God. We live in a world of what I call practical atheism. What does this mean? We recognize a God but we live as if there is no God. We recognize a God, but we live as if there is no God. Life is ordered and ordered on a basis that sidelines spiritual and moral values that ought to guide life. We are asked to conform to values that do not match the claims of our faith. And my friends, you notice this, that whenever there is any kind of protest coming from people of faith, we are simply told to shut up. Shut up. Religion belongs to private life. And religion must not be mixed up with public life. That's the kind of world in which we live. It's a world where there is a diminishing of the boundaries between right and wrong. 
It is a world where there is a diminishing of the boundaries between good and evil. It is a world where there is a diminishing of the boundaries between being for God and being for ourselves. My friends, there is a confusion in our world between what I call ends and means. The world in which we live said, use any means whatever to achieve your ends. Forgetting that corrupt means corrupt good ends. We live in a world that confuses character and conduct. So there is no connection between character and conduct. People believe that it is conduct that creates good character. But it is good character that produces good conduct. That is the thing we need to bear in mind. We live in a world that confuses God and man and God and things. So then, when you seek to live a life of faith in this world, this world, you will find, will take a stand against you. It is going to. It is always seeking to capture us. It is always seeking to co-opt us. It is always seeking to control us. And when we do not fall, for it, it opposes us, it challenges us, it makes life hard for us. I don't want to be naughty, but if as Christians you are not experiencing this, you have already conformed. Because this is the kind of world in which we live. Therefore, one of the things we stand to find is that when we are committed to faith in God at different levels, in different forms, in different settings and spaces where we find ourselves, our faithfulness to God is challenged. Is not so with you? Do you not find it so? Therefore, if we are challenged, we can learn some lessons from the three young believers that are absolutely important for us as a church and for us as ordinary Christians. I want then to leave with you certain things from the life of those three young believers and ask you to see if your life corporately as a church and your life individually to see if these things are true about you living in today's world because if they are not true we are letting down the God of our faith what are the things I want to ask you if you remember the story to look at 
first i want you to see something about those three young believers the impact the impact of their spiritual identity the impact of their spiritual identity pastor what on god's earth do you mean by that just this who they were because of who and what they stood for made a tremendous public impact in the community in which they lived is it a lie you don't see that in the story who they were because of who and what they stood for spiritually made a tremendous public impact on their community those with whom they related those with whom they were associated those with whom they were those who watched them from afar, those with whom they encountered, their spiritual identity made a tremendous impact on them. Is this so with you? Who you are. Who you are because of who and what you stand for spiritually without your even knowing it you are making a tremendous impact on those around you check your home check your work base check the circle of your colleagues Check how you operate. What kind of impact is your spiritual identity making on those around you? They were committed to God. And that commitment to God produced in them an alternative lifestyle an alternative lifestyle that challenged the lifestyle of the dominant culture in which they lived am i not right the virtues they manifested the values they upheld the standards by which they lived the principles which they applied in life were counter cultural they ran counter to the virtues the values the standards and the principles that were characteristic of their social order those men and yet and yet by the courage of their conviction they sought to live the difference in the midst seeking to make a difference for good for all that is of critical importance so what do we see when you read this story you will notice that these three young believers they lived such a life making such an impact that there were many 
who made themselves their enemies. Isn't that right? Don't you see it? Mistrust, suspicion, dislike. And when the opportunity arose, they sought to make out that these three young believers were disloyal to the powers. They reported them to the powers. Isn't that right? This is what we see in the story. The impact of their spiritual identity made them dislike. You know, I just want to say in passing, if you stand for your faith where you are, they will not like you, but they will respect you. And this, these, these three young believers, and they brought all the powers against them, but they stood their ground. They stood their ground. May I say, a lesson I want to draw from this, my friends. Your spiritual identity is always a source of effective Christian witness. Your spiritual identity is always a source of effective Christian witness. Do you know that? You know that's what Jesus was talking about when he said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine. That's what, that's what he meant when he was talking about the salt of the earth. The power of a creative minority Three young believers, the amount of salt you put in a pot is never as large as the content in which it is put, but it makes its impact. And this is what we must bear in mind, the impact of your spiritual identity. Jesus said, you are in the world, but what? You are not of the world. But when he said that, he did not mean you must detach and become disconnected and hide in a spiritual ghetto. He did not mean that. Neither did he mean that you must conform. But you know what he meant? You must live your difference and live the difference your faith makes in the midst. So there's a creative tension. There's a creative tension. You are making your contribution, but not as the world would want it. May I ask, as a Christian, are you living the alternative lifestyle so that the values you live will challenge the current values around? Can I ask you that? Listen, what does the Lord require of you? Justice. Are you living a life of equity and commitment to justice? Mercy, humility, integrity, honesty, trustworthiness, righteousness, truth speaking with love, 
The world is lacking in these things. But God's people are committed to them. Are you there? Is this the pattern of your life? I am going to ask that in your decision making, in your plans, in the choices you make, as you choose your way in life, let it be that an impact is made by your spiritual identity. It is keeping faith with the faith. Ready for that? Let me hurry and make another observation from these guys. I put it this way. Look, look, look in the story. I never struck me before until I was thinking about it again. And this is something I've been written a book on. You know what struck me? Is what I call the strength of their spiritual unity. The strength of their spiritual unity. Read a story. Read a story. From beginning to end, these men, I don't even like to say young men, because I call them young believers, because young women you are included too. This is genderless. You understand? From beginning to end, look at it. They were spoken about together. Every time you talk about them, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You don't notice that. Every time they address them, it, it, they were addressed together. Every time they acted against them, they acted against them together. And every time they threatened them, they threatened them together. The strength of their spiritual union. More than that, every time they talk, they talk together. Every time they respond, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to Nebuchadnezzar, the strength of their spiritual unity. And that was profound. You know what? You know what? And I want to leave this with you. When you read this story then, you will see that their life was marked but by what I call a bond, a bond of spiritual unity that they found in God was made possible by God and was preserved by God. Look at this. What it is in which, how, how they express this unity. Three things. Reverence for God. They were at one. Their worship. Nothing can get between them. And in our passage, not only reverence for God, but dependence on God. And thirdly, obedience to God. Unity in reverence, dependence, and obedience. Do we find that in the church? Are you contributing to that? After you come here today, and, you know, I always admire Bolivar Choir and Mr. Mack. After you come and sing so wonderfully, are you in unity in this church? Who is making mischief? Who is sowing discord? Who is sowing discord? Who is 
creating division. And where there is unity in reverence, dependence, and obedience, what emerges out of, what emerges out of this? Oneness, belongingness, and faithfulness. That's what you see. That's what you see where there is strength of unity, oneness, belongingness, and faithfulness. Do you sense that? We are all Christians. We are here this morning. Are you a contributor to oneness? Do you sense a sense of belongingness? Are you pursuing the faithfulness that we see in the life of these three young believers challenging you? We are celebrating Jamaica's independence. God put the church in this country at this moment to make a difference. And we are only going to make it where we find strength in spiritual unity. May I say, the powers of the world fail fail and they show ultimate weakness when they are not able to divide us don't you see Nebuchadnezzar big and bad powerful and these three believers make him look weak for he was unable to divide and rule. He was unable to divide and rule. And we must recognize that every time the powers fail, it is because of the strength of unity that God gives to us. I, I know not many Christians here. If you're a Christian, your life is not without some struggle. No care what you hear on radio and all of that. Because you live in a sinful world. And you have to be fighting battles every day. But the Apostle Paul gives us a word that we must apply to ourselves. God's power is made perfect in our weakness. And that is recognized in the strength of unity. So what we need to bear in mind is that the first thing the powers want to do is to divide us is to create division and so as i pass by i'm going to ask is there factionalism in boulevard is there cliqueism in boulevard is there partisanship in boulevard thank god there is none What party you belong to in this church? Too often, we seek to divide on gender. Women's separation, men's brotherhood, and each have independent agenda and jealousy. Not in Boulevard. Too often, the division is generational the youth and the adults. Church is made up today of three sexes, male, female, and youth. And every time you go to church meeting is what the youth want or 
is why we're not giving to the youth. There is a strength in unity. We must not let. If we divide, it must be to serve the greater good. I beg of you. So, why we have so many denominations? And in our denominations, why we have church against church? Only the devil can win. Watch these guys. The strength of their spiritual unity. I end. I end. Go back and read this story. The impact of their spiritual identity. Who they were because of who and what they stood for spiritually made a fundamental public impact for good. The strength of their spiritual unity exposed the weakness of the powers that boasted about their capacity to do as they like. I end with this, and I ask you to look at it. When you look at the story, you know what you see? You know what you see? And I'm begging you as a church living in today's world. In the end, three young believers. You know what you see? The maturity of their spirituality. The maturity of their spirituality. These are three, three, three young people. But maturity has nothing to do with age when it comes down to the spirit. The maturity of their spirituality. How does this come out, Pastor? Read the story. At no point in this story did these three young believers say, look, one, let us be realistic. Did you hear that? Let us be realistic. At no point in this story did you hear them say, man, we have got to be practical. At no time in this story they say, boy, common sense of no to take over. Anytime you hear that in spiritual matters, look out for compromise. Look out for compromise. Let's be realistic, man. We are only human. We are only human. At no place in this story, they were mature beyond that. At no time did you see they come together and say, boy, at this time, for a temporary measure for our survival, let us give in. For we know that Nebuchadnezzar is not God. So let us call him God, but we know in our heart that he's not God. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? At no place in this story did these three young believers seek to bargain? To bargain with the king. Why, let me see if we can bargain with the king to see if he could give us a blight. You see, it's in this story. It's not in this story. You know what? This, these guys, they did not think that Nebuchadnezzar was equal to their God. And they only saw their God. But I want to say something to us as Christians about mature spirituality. They were threatened. 
their life was online. Did you hear them entering into any transactional bargain with God? God, if you do this, then we promise we will do that. Anybody in here who is in this transactional business with God? Anybody? Look, God, prove yourself. If you do this, we will do this. No transactional. No transactional. So what do we see as the display of mature spirituality? What do we see? I name it quickly. Unconditional. Unreserved. Unrestrained. Absolute devotion and dedication to God. Come what may. That's it. Unconditional. Unreserved. Unrestrained. Devotion and dedication to God. Come what may. We are entirely in your hands, O oh God. For anything, and this is what ordinary everyday Christian must bear in mind. Everything we do for God, God deserve it. God deserve it. We owe it to God because of who God is. And that is the story that I want. So then, mature spirituality puts us at a place where the world will not have its way with us. Can I leave that with you? And this is it. My friends, I'm an old retired pastor. I know that I am reflecting and I'm seeing also and looking back at ministry. I want to say to my sisters and brothers at Boulevard and in the cyber world, whatever it is. God has made provision that we can develop mature spirituality. And we, if we neglect them, we will become immature and unstable and will be conquered by the world. May I ask you? God has given us worship. Do we worship God in spirit and in truth? Is our entire life a spiritual offering to God in worship? God has given us his word. I have never asked Reverend Dick, and I don't have a knowledge. But because I love Boulevard people so much, I believe that Bible study is like this on a Wednesday evening. Do we love Bible study? Because that is what is going to build this maturity. You can't neglect it and become mature. Fellowship. What is fellowship? Fellowship is being a share, having a share, and giving a share. Are you there? Service. We grow. In Jamaica today, we deprive our country 
of the blessings it can receive when we do not offer them the impact of our spiritual identity. The strength of our spiritual unity and the maturity of our spirituality. Come, come. There is much to be done. Keeping faith with the faith. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God's word has been declared, and not just declared this morning, declared in a most profound way. You know, Jesus was referred to many times as teacher. We heard this morning from preacher Birchell Taylor, but also teacher Birchell Taylor. I, I learned a lot from teacher Virgil Taylor this morning. And I really hope that God's word that has been declared has fallen on fertile ground. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we all can be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego at all times. One of the most profound things at all times. They were called together. Never Shadrach or Meshach. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Unity in the spirit. And we must stay united. If we're going to respond, there's a hymn of response. And if you feel that you, you want to be strong like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you feel threatened by the invasion that is taking place on our faith and we need the unity and the strength in our faith. Come forward, please, as we sing, O oh Jesus, I have promised. Stand, please, for the hymn of response, O oh Jesus, I have promised. And if you want your spiritual identity to be seen, if you want to have an impact on the society and the community around you and you need that prayer that your impact will be felt and your spiritual identity will be seen please come forward oh jesus i have promised to serve thee to the end be thou forever near me my master and my friend I shall not fear the battle If thou art by my side More wonder from the pathway If thou wilt be my God Oh let me hear thee speaking In accents clear and Trust my judgment, the way the sound is still. Oh, speak to reassure me, to hasten our control. Oh, oh, speak and make me listen, the guardian of my soul. Oh, Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee that where thou art in glory there shall thy servant be and Jesus I have promised to serve thee to the end oh, oh give me grace to follow my master and my friend oh let me see thy footprints and in the plant my home my hope to follow duly is thy strength and love 
Oh, guide me, call me, draw me. Oh, hold me to the end. And then in heaven receive me, my Savior and my friend. And then in heaven receive me, my Savior and my friend. Yeah, no, this was so powerful. I think if we just sing that last stanza again for those who are hesitant, undecided, who really wish to come forward. You feel sometimes weak and under threat. But Jesus has promised to be with you to the end. You're in the world, but not of the world. But you want to remain in the world and have an impact on your community, on your society, on your family, on your friends, in the workplace. Come forward, please, as we sing to the glory of God, Jesus, I have promised. Come forward and make that promise. Oh, let me see thy footprints, and in them plant my own. My hope to follow duly is in thy strength alone. Oh, guide me, call me, draw me, uphold me to the end, and then in heaven receive me, my Savior and my friend, and then in heaven receive me, my What a friend we have in Jesus. The best friend we could ever have. The best friend anyone could ever have. He was a friend to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego years and centuries ago. And he is the best friend to us today in independent Jamaica. Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you this morning. Having heard your word. Having heard God Almighty that you keep your promises and having heard father god that there's strength in unity that we need to have an impact in our community father god we commit this morning let us commit to serve you to the end we commit father god to have that impact in our society in our community we commit, Father God, to be bold like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that despite what others may say or what may happen around us, together we know with our faith and trust in you, steadfast faith, that God Almighty, you did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we know you will do it for us here in Jamaica as we celebrate but we celebrate most of all that all through the years you have remained in this country despite all that has happened despite despite us despite us not being steadfast in our faith at times our god almighty you have kept your promise so come this morning father now we made the promise and we will keep the promise to you to be steadfast in our faith to remain in unity to have that impact in our community and to always remember you father god lord i pray for all who are at the altar this morning and even those that are not here in your congregation and in the far off field in the platform that you have provided ask father god that you will strengthen us all we have heard your word and we know father god we must be the salt of the earth the salt is a small amount in the pot we may be few in numbers in the world but like the salt in the pot we are the salt of the earth who will rescue your country jamaica god almighty as we face the challenges that are upon us 
we know it is out there the devil never sleeps but you father god are always wide awake and will challenge whatever is coming at us individually or as a country and we pray god almighty that our leaders and we as individuals will lean on you and not on our own understanding we thank you god that we could come together this morning in your name to worship and to praise you to hear your word to listen to your word and we go forth now all there in this beautiful land that you have given us jamaica land we love to spread your word in unity and in faith in jesus name we pray amen before i invite thank you all before i invite pastor reverend doctor teacher virgil taylor to do the benediction just want to say on your behalf to say thank you very much sir for your word to us this morning you know this this is a special day it's it's Jamaica's birthday and you know whenever you have a birthday you're supposed to be happy everybody's having a birthday so we're happy today because it's Jamaica's birth and but today is the sixth we know there's a holiday tomorrow but today is the day and what better place to spend a birthday than in the house of the Lord so let us all just say a happy birth, a happy blessed birthday to Jamaica happy blessed birthday Jamaica today is the 6th of August and we're happy to be in the house of the Lord so benediction the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sharing of the peace, greet each other in the name of Jesus and in the independence celebration. <laughs>